a hate group protesting outside the Jewish Community Center. Flyers distributed in a San Antonio neighborhood and a hateful message written on the side of a local business. These are all incidents that we've seen in the last couple of weeks in San Antonio. So let's discuss this with the Southwest Regional Director of the Anti-Defamation League, Mark Tobin. Mark, I appreciate you being with us. We've had you on before. Are we seeing, I mean, obviously we're seeing an increase in these incidents that at least we're taking note of in San Antonio. Are you seeing it across the country or even in the state of Texas? Yeah, first, thank you for having me back. Um, I'm glad uh, to have the opportunity to speak with y'all. Um, yes, unfortunately, this is not a trend strictly affecting San Antonio or Texas, but something that's happening at various parts around the country. Uh, there are certain extremist groups um, who connect uh, online through various social media platforms, um, and they may organize a trip like happened recently, really for the purpose of recruitment to gain attention and, quite frankly, to gain funds. And the fact that you mentioned these groups, that there is some kind of organization, at least it seems, with some of these rallies, some of these hateful events moving from state to state. Is that unique or is that something that the ADL has known about for quite some time and, and been tracking? And we've been tracking it for the for the last few years, and certainly there's there's been an increase in groups, you know, connecting Charlottesville, for example. Uh, that was a prime example of how uh, extremists connected and planned uh, the rally uh, for, for Charlottesville back in September of 17. So it's it's newer, but it's not new. Talk about um, how you track these things. Not only do you track these things, I mean, I, sometimes you're able to infiltrate some of these groups. Am I right? Well, we don't we don't uh, infiltrate. No. OK. Um, Everything that, that we do, we come by from public sourcing. Um, we have some very dedicated people that uh, that keep track of these things. But um, in, in this case, this is a group which wanted to publicize their activities in order to recruit new members and, quite frankly, to raise money. Uh, so uh, anybody that was paying attention you know, could, could watch, which is a problem. You know, Steve mentioned some of the things that we have seen in San Antonio just in the last couple of weeks with, you know, sandwich bags full of flyers being tossed into people's driveways throughout a neighborhood, large signs on the side of a business, all of that within the last month or so. So is there a reason why some of these anti-Semitic actions, these events, messages are being spread right now? Um you know, it's it's hard to really know for for sure unless you can actually talk to each person uh, who might be perpetrating these these forms of hatred. Um, secondly, uh, while anti-Semitism is a big part of it, uh, this is all about spreading hate. It's all about creating divisiveness, um, and it is all about blaming. It's about blaming the other, with, whether it's a Jewish person or a black person or an immigrant. Uh, these are efforts in order to gain political power by trying to ostracize, dehumanize, and label people that they consider other. Uh, why now? You know, certainly there's, there's an uptick. In 2020, for example, there were over 5,000 instances of distributions of white supremacist propaganda, uh, the highest of all time, and Texas led the country with almost 600 incidences. Uh, so we've been seeing this increase. And, uh, you know, if, if I were to, to, to take some, some guesses, I suppose, it would be that um, these groups are, are feeling emboldened. Uh, they're feeling emboldened by the fact that even though uh, the attack on the Capitol on January 6th uh, was, was condemned, there are some, including people uh, in office, who are defending it. Um, just like when they got the green light during Charlottesville about the, you know, there's good people on both sides. Uh, and so they, they see these kinds of, of either inactions or actions um, as uh, opportunities to advance their own cause. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sort of anti-government fervor uh, that might be directed right now at schools or at the federal government. Uh, they also look at this as an opportunity. Uh, in order to push their own agenda and push their own message 
uh, which will further create wedges in our society. Mark, I like how you put that, attacking the other. That's what a lot of these groups, these hate groups, are trying to do, no matter what the other is. If you're trying to stand up to this, if you're trying to do something to counteract what is happening in your community, whether it's San Antonio or anywhere, what's your advice to people? How can uh, people You know, help? there's, sure, and, and that's what's critical. If we are going to change the environment we're in, um, which is an environment which is allowing uh, this kind of hatred to, to grow, um, it's incumbent upon everyone. And there are certain things that can be done at the policy level, uh, whether that's opposing extremists who might want to enter government service, uh, is either the military or law enforcement, um, or ending the complicity of social media and facilitating extremism. Uh, it, we, there's also the message of delivering to the social media companies about um, while the capitalist intentions are all great, the idea that um, profit should be superior to uh, disallowing the kind of hate and denialism and anti-Semitism uh, and racism that is perpetrated on online platforms has to end. Uh, and those are at the policy level. Individually, everyone has uh, a role. And once again, that can start by holding your elected officials accountable, number one. Um, number two, like so many things, um, anti-hatred starts in the home. And it starts by showing and providing examples of how people should be treated uh, and when it's appropriate to, to take a stand and when it's appropriate to say something. And when it's appropriate to report an incident, and incident reporting, by the way, is a really important piece. Uh, unfortunately, most people who are uh, victims of hate instances and hate crimes do not report. Uh, and we need to change that. And there's many efforts underway in order to do that. But people need to be, feel comfortable and feel safe so that they can report. And then we have an even better idea of where this kind of activity is happening. And we do have a database, ADL. Uh, org report incidents if anyone sees any kind of hate discrimination uh, hate crime uh, please uh, let us know about it and, and we will respond and part of the effort to stand up to hate is happening right here in san antonio tomorrow evening there was a unity event being held on the campus of san antonio jewish community we have all the details on our website at ksat.com. Uh, you have to sign up before you attend, so check that out online. Mark Tobin, thanks so much for being with us from the Anti-Defamation League. We always appreciate the information you share. And I always appreciate you having me on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. We'll be right back.